Hi guys, my name is Sandy. I'm homeschooling mom to two boys. Um, they are currently finishing up the fourth and sixth grade years. And today I'm going to go over the Good and the Beautiful history. I'm going to go over the year three. Uh, this is where we started. This is where we are in our history timeline right now. We are on Westward Expansion. So I thought I would start year three and try it out, see if we like it. Um, and I'm filming for my RV right now. We are moving across country. We sold our house in the Southwest state and we are moving to a New England state. So in between houses, we're kind of stuck in the RV until our next house is ready. So let's get started. The main components of the Good and the Beautiful history is the course book. And in this level, you've got the big book of history stories. And of course there's a timeline included, which I did not purchase the timeline but they did send me the stickers as part of the package. And then the student explorer pages, which you have to print up yourself. And it goes by levels. Um, I have some examples of the one to three and the grades four to six. And what I did, did with the student explorer pages is I printed them all up and I put them in this binder. I'm gonna start with the course book. The way it's set up and the way we're using it is we do two lessons a week for the entire year. And the lessons I would say take anywhere from 20 to like 40 minutes. And that's not included the additional reading from the chapter book that you should be doing with it. It's broken up into four different units. This is the first unit, Ancient Mesopotamia. The second one is Ancient Africa and Native Americans. The third one is Westward Expansion, which is the one we did. And the last one is World War II. So you can see they're not really going in order. There's unit one. I'm going to flip over to the unit that we have done. So this is the one we've completed, Unit 3, Westward Expansion. So here's a typical lesson. It's all, so the lessons are really super easy to follow along with, which is what I love about it. Um, the first thing that you have to do for this lesson is an audio recording. Now the audio recordings are not every single lesson, and they're from like 7 to 12 minutes long. Now starting in year 3, some people had mentioned they had trouble with the audio recordings and their children were, you know, a little bit confused, but mine seemed to catch on to it pretty good, and they did enjoy the recordings. Um, and then there's usually, there's like, in this lesson, there's a little section to read to the children, which is very short. And then after that, usually after like reading or audio recordings, we'll ask a few questions. So I ask my children the questions and they take turns and they just answer me out loud. And of course there's the timeline activity, which you would pull out these stickers and do it. And I love how there's a lot of real life photographs and drawings from time periods. And I will show that to my children. It gives you a really easy example for the timeline. And then over here, of course, is the read aloud, which is the book of your choice. Now for this unit, it was Little House on the Prairie. We've already read that book. So there were additional books and we ended up reading a book from the Gold Rush. And I did do the audio recording for that one. Here's the next lesson. There's just a little bit to read to the children. There's a map activity. There's a little bit more to read to them. And then of course you've got a few questions right here, another timeline activity. You get to play the Bill of Roundups game. I have it actually packed away right now so I can't show you guys. Uh, we did try it a few times. My kids didn't enjoy it too much. It was kind of like over what they've already learned. So we'll probably get back to that when they're a little bit older. Um, lesson 36. Of course there's a list of things that you need for this lesson right here. Which is just simple things you can find around the house. Um, you get to read from the big book of history stories for this lesson. Here's the big book of history stories. I love this book. It's very colorful. Um, it's very, it's got a lot of good information in here. And here's the story on Robert Fulton. It gives the history of the first boats. And then Fulton's early life.
And of course, there's a lot of stories. I would say maybe every three or four lessons you would read from this book for the kids. There's the Alamo. And what I had my kids do is when I read this to them, I would let them play with their little slime or their putty so that they would have something to do while I was reading out loud. Um, the next step over here is you just have to read to the children a little bit. And then there's a history notebook assignment. And then there's a pinwheel page. We didn't end up doing this. This might be better for younger children, this activity. And I would say the lessons take anywhere from maybe 20 to like 35 minutes, and that's without the additional reading. Um, and what we do for the additional reading, our story in the gold rush that we read, uh, I ended up buying an audiobook from Amazon. And um, we would read the audiobook maybe 20 minutes before bed every night, and I would turn off the lights, and my kids would kind of fall asleep listening to their audiobook. So the last component is the student explorer sheets, and you have to print these up yourself. And they're divided by grades. This one is grade one to three, and this one's grade four to six. And I'm going to show you a few of them. So one to three, there's a lot of coloring pages, which I have them do a lot of times when I'm reading out loud a book or from the lesson. And then this is a four to six. It is a timeline picture that he's got to do to narrate the story that I've read to them. Um, for four to six, he has to copy the sentences and there's some vocabulary words on this one. And then over here, this is another four to six, which both of my children did this assignment. I wanted to make a quick mention. We had started off our school year with not grass. And while the curriculum looked beautiful, I feel like my children were not old enough for it just yet. My children are in fourth and sixth grade. And the not grass is really, we were doing the middle school, which is for like fifth to eighth grade. Um, and it was just too much textbook reading for especially my youngest son. So we never got through that. After we tried out Knotgrass and it just wasn't working for our family too well, I put together my own history curriculum. And um, because we had to move across country, it was just getting way, way too much for me to pull together from all the different sources and to do all the hands-on projects. So I bought this just because it's open and go. And it's actually worked out really good. We're going to continue it. We love it. It's the perfect balance of activities for my children at the age they're at. And um, the lessons are short enough where I feel if my kids really want to dive deeper into a subject, we can look up a YouTube video or do like additional activities. Um, like we did, I, I love throwing in historic recipes into it. So we made Johnny Cakes with cornmeal and my kids loved that part of it. So I guess that's pretty much it. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was helpful. Bye.